Felix, look, it's the moon. What's up, everybody? Welcome back. We're actually going to be headed to that same 320 sack store. And we actually have a different problem. We're not going to be messing with the boat side this time. He says the port motor is not charging. So I brought a part. Maybe it's the part that we have here. That's one of the common problems. That's what I'm going to show you. And if it's not, we'll further diagnose it. But uh, let's just get there. So I'll see you there. Oh, we made it pretty windy might rain again here but here it is the sack store we got our meter we got that cable I'll show you let's jump on and see if we can figure out I guess it's the port engine these are 225 v6s the first thing we want to do is light everything up and let's check and make sure that we got low voltage on that side the port side that's not the starboard side the battery switches are underneath here light up our key switches here wait for the system to boot up here and we'll look we should be able to see the mercury and see which battery is low because if it's not charging we're gonna have a low battery for sure well there we go 11.3 and 12.4 so we definitely have a port side problem it should be charged up if this thing was running so I'm gonna pull the cowling on this one so we can check some things and let me grab a hose real quick and we'll fire it up okay we got our hose hooked up our cowling is off here let me show you before we do any testing on Mercury's, they have alternators that are belt driven here. There's our output right here. So we're gonna check it right here to make sure what we have coming out of the alternator, if anything, because there's a rectifier regulator built into it on top here. So this little cable's for here. Anyway, this cable actually leads us around to the starboard side here. Sorry, the forklift might make some noise here around me. So it goes down, you can see it coming around right here. And there's a fuse that's in line with it and it comes back around to our positive cable here so it wraps around comes here so we're going to check when it's running here if we have no output here but we have output on the alternator that means this cable the one i brought with me the fuse in it has blown so now let's fire this thing up hopefully it'll start on the low voltage but we'll see all right here we go let's see I think it might be too dead to try to start. Yeah, four volts. No, nope. we're not gonna get it on this one. So, let me go grab a jump box. We're gonna open up this hatch right here and we'll jump the battery. We also wanna look for loose connections because that can cause a problem with the uh, fuse also. Felix, I need to grab something from you. Jumper box. Our jumper box. There's our cable I was talking about earlier. See, there's a fuse right in line right here. You can't replace it without replacing this cable because it's all heat shrunk in here. So, hopefully that's the case. But we're gonna look right now before we start it because we can't underneath here. So let's lift this up. I wanna pull the, find the batteries and pull the covers off, check our connections, find which battery is bad so we can jump it. Or not bad, I would say weak. This thing probably doesn't have bad batteries being that it's got 25 hours on it. just haven't been charging get down in our hole here these yellow tops are gonna be our batteries there should be two of them let's pull our covers off real quick here and we're gonna check at the batteries here and see which one is weak now our covers are off let's see what our first battery has here for voltage 12.14 so that's not our bad one this must be the starboard side all right so this should be our port side over here yeah, 11.0 well, 11 basically. So this is our port side battery. Let me put the jumper box on this and see if we can fire it up. There we go. Turn it on. Get us some water. Our key switch is on. Let's see what kind of voltage we got now. Oh, while that boots up. I almost forgot. Let me check something real quick. I might yank on all these. Make sure that they're tight that can definitely cause a problem they all seem to be good there we go that's better this thing should fire up now let's see there 
it is. All right, so now we just want to check the top of this motor at the alternator to see if we're putting out anything, any charging voltage. It's probably going to be wide open if the alternator is working good, which is like 17 or 18 volts. Now there we go. 18 volts, 18 and a half, so it's trying its hardest. Now we just got to check on our plug over in the side. So there's our problem. We're not getting any output between that cable and the alternator. Let's shut her down. Okay, so we know our problem now is definitely our fusible link, they call it. But it looks like, I'm trying to look down below this intake right here, you can't really see it, but it wraps around underneath here, so I gotta pull this off. So I'm gonna go grab a 10 millimeter, I'm pretty sure 10 or eight millimeter here. And that's basically all the screws we need. Or the only thing we need to get all these screws out are bolts. So let me get this off and then we'll take a look underneath. All right, so here is our intake. A little cover for the fuel injectors. Here is our charge lead right here. That leads us to here and that cable goes to a voltage sensing relay which allows the uh, charging system to basically charge the house side after it charges the motor side. But we have some relays here, probably start relay. This is trim and tilt relays. There's our starter motor itself. There's the uh, little power distribution panel right here. That's part of our intake. It's the main intake the throttle body right there. What else we got in here? There's our head. There's those fuel injectors. A little cover goes over this. You gotta pull that off to get the intake off here. So let's replace this cable. All right, well, here's our old cable. And our new one I've already attached to our alternator right here. Follow it down just like the old one. And we just gotta tighten our spot right here. 13 millimeter. All the intake bolts were eight millimeter. Make sure this is good and tight. We'll make sure she's charging good. Another thing too that will cause this fuse to blow is if you hook up your jumper leads backwards. So if you try to jump start it because you got a dead battery. Oh, she's loud. Yeah, if you jump start it with a dead battery and you hook them up backwards and turn it on or whatever, you can blow this too because it's all connected to the same spot, basically. So you got battery cable here. This is your charge lead, but these both lead to the same spot because it's got a VSR, what I was talking about earlier, the voltage switching relay. So now, we're all buttoned up here. Let me throw our intake back on and start it up, see if we got voltage. So we are done here. Cover back on here. You're all ready. You gonna charge for me, buddy? Well, we have one problem here. I turned my jumper box off. I had to close that hatch so that I could get to the intake on that. So let's see if it starts before I gotta open that back up and flip the jumper box back on here. Hopefully it'll start. Yay. Oh, look at that. Right away. We're charging. System okay. Well, all right. That's good news. The motor's been running for a little while here. We've got 12.6 volts on both, so it's actually the voltage switching relay has switched over and now it's charging everything like it should be. Also, if you have this problem on a Verado with the supercharged, they call them L6s, the inline six, this is the new version, which is a V6 or V8. They have the same fuse in line. So if you have the same problem where you're not getting voltage out, check that first. You can also have, like I say, loose battery connections. You got all sorts of different problems here. They, you know, jumping it the wrong way can do it. If you jump it backwards, you can blow those fuses. Um, or the alternator can fail, or the rectifier regulator can fail. But luckily, the common problem we see with these is the low voltage. Sometimes we'll take that fuse out, or if the customer might jump it wrong, the wrong way, you can blow the fuse. So anyway, if you've got any questions about that, you know, comment down below. But as always, I appreciate everybody watching, and I will see you next time. Later. Jumper box is removed. It's been charging for a while. Let's see if she starts. Ooh, sounds good. 